And good afternoon. We're having a little bit of a late start, but it's glad uh, glad to have you guys uh, watching. Uh, this is First Look right here live from Santa Anita. We're going to take a first look at the races at uh, Del Mar today and tomorrow. A lot of exciting news, uh, I think, on the Santa Anita front as we announce that we're going to increase purses uh, for our upcoming meet. Uh, very excited. I mean, with the ship and, uh, and you're in and you win, and the added purses, and all the incentives. I think our meet's going to be fantastic coming up, Jabby. Yeah, looking forward to it, George. Um, you know, the ship and stay, plus the added purse money. Then with uh, the Delmar, with Delmar having the Breeders' Cup right behind us, I think October should be terrific. Um, looking forward to it, buddy. Looking forward to getting back here live again. How about you there, Iggy? Yeah, and uh, also to, to – to get more of a grasp on that new shoot that that turf shoot is fascinating the horses are running great over it and uh you know that's another one as a handicapper because i'm not riding right now i'm trying to figure out certain angles if it's better to be inside or outside they're crossing dirt so uh, you know it's i can't wait to to get another sample of of the new shoot turf course i think it's it's just you know cutting edge yeah, it's pretty exciting. I, I'm still looking forward to, you know, returning. Hopefully, you know, safety has been a first priority, but I love six and a half down the hill. That's just such a unique course. I'm hoping it comes back. What do you what are you guys what are your feelings on it? Yeah, well, I'll, Iggy, I get it. You know, I think it's my favorite or favorite race to watch and bet. And Iggy, you're the only one who's actually ridden it before. But I, I'd love to get your opinion on that. I can't imagine there's a jockey anywhere on the planet if they rode that race it wouldn't at least sit with them as one of uh, the neatest experiences if you didn't think it was the best way to race ever wow. because it is so different because you're going downhill it has done so much easier that if you do let a horse bounce along you can cut a, a, a quarter of a mile in under 20 seconds, which is almost impossible. You know, I mean, a true 40, uh, 42 and change half is really going fast. And then you cross dirt back onto it. Is, <laughs> you're turning right and left. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It's so exciting, especially now that we've got to see a little bit um, of the GoPro cameras on some of the guys and girls that, that once you get to see that downhill experience, it really is like no other. I was lucky enough. I got to ride some fast horses down there, including Echo Eddie, a cow bred. It, when they take to that course, it, it's rare that they get beat. A horse can get really good and win. We've seen it over and over again, win eight or nine races, including Breeders' Cups going into it. a fantastic, my favorite race by far to ride. You know, there was there was a there was a race, um, and there's a stakes race after it, anyways. But there was a race Sunday, I believe. Carla Gaines had a first time starter, and the mom was unzip me. Oh, Ooh, yeah, love. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Remember unzip me? Yeah, for sure. Right. And with all this new technology they have, you know, I'd love to see like a jockey cam in that kind of way, turning right, turning left. Here's the dirt. What to go? What to do? Or the or the uh, the other one I like a lot is the. Uh, Drone cam where the drones Absolutely. over them, that, yes. that yeah. you really could see if they cut them yeah. off and this and that. That's better than a head on or a. Uh, I love I, that angle. I remember seeing that angle um, for um, the Kentucky Derby that Calvin Burrell won, and it was from up above like that. And it when was he so the rail, especially that one because he was on the fence the whole <laughs> trip. He yeah, never unbelievable. moved and dodged yeah. one horse and went directly back to the fence. Yeah. It was crazy. It was such yeah. a good ride to do it in that race with that many horses and did it like it was flawless. And that view from up above, you couldn't have seen it any other way. It was just, it was beautiful. It was poetry in motion. And Iggy, back to the downhill. The, 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 the right-hand turn is quite severe, isn't it? People don't realize that without seeing it much bigger than than you would think um riding it and uh, of course me being young uh, when i first got here i thought well why is everybody making such a deep right turn you know the shortest <laughs> but place between two distances is a straight line straight and line. you can go straight the problem is is that everybody now in front of you has turned right 
and you're almost at a T, Adam, if you go decide to go straight. straight. So you go, oh, maybe that wasn't such a smart move. But there is a few moves that you can learn down the hill, at least that I thought if you're sitting in the pocket inside, wait, don't don't look to get out. The first horse will jump out. He naturally will. And if you're in the pocket, you have a little time to get through and it will make you a hero. And a lot of the times you're thinking, I got to go. It's time to go. There's only a quarter mile and I got to find the lane. If you're in that pocket, it, it's a great place to be because you do. Most of the time you get a little bit of daylight, you know, and if you have horse, you can shoot through there. Love well, it. uh, Hopefully you guys will be uh, wagering, and if you do, you'll be wagering with uh, FirstBet.com, First.com, right here. Uh, and uh, if uh, Cedillo wins, uh, somebody's going to win a hundred dollars. So that's a pretty cool promotion, I think. And Cedillo has certainly had a wonderful meet so far, and uh, hopefully uh, much more success so we can give away that money on First Bet, and of course, if you bet through Express Bet as well. And if you want to bet, we're going to give you some horses to bet. We're going to concentrate today. On the late pick five, and we're going to kick it off in race number four. And uh, Chappy, uh, you like this race. They're going a mile. Maiden Claimers, one of my favorite races to bet is Maiden Claimers. How did you see race number four? Yeah, I do, George. There's a you know, couple interesting ways to go. And the obvious, the captain obvious would be the the eight horse. And if, if I can pronounce this correctly, you both owe me a dollar. La Polsinella. Perfect. Uh, with, yeah. With, Flavian Pratt coming from Churchill, Ron Moquette, you know, first time Pratt, Pratt seems to win everything he touches right now. And that's the eight to five uh, morning line favorite and probably well should be. The worst that I was um, looking at that's making me curious is the three curious Inji, who's six to one for Jeff Mullins and Tyler Bays. If you go back and watch this race, Iggy, I don't know if you got to see it. But after the show, go back. Now, when it says stumble badly at the start on the far right in your PPs, that does it no justice. I mean, I don't know how this horse doesn't fall over. It, like, it goes to its nose and drags its nose for about five yards. It's unbelievable. And the horse actually gathered itself, and, and, and Bayes acted like he did that much left, so he's kind of jogging around. And the horse actually gained some interest and then galloped out real well after the race. So I think there's a lot more there. And I think at 6-1 to one, that um, this is the, the play, Curious Inji, after the absolutely horrible start last time out in race four. And, you know, that puts the jock uh, not in a bad position, but also when they do stumble that bad, um, a lot of the times they grab themselves with their back feet. So right. you don't want to, you know, start to ask a horse to go or, 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 or push a horse on if he's stepped himself or sometimes just ripped a shoe off. They don't necessarily have to do that. But then, you know, they're running with one shoe off. So th sometimes those trips become easier where the jock just kind of, it becomes more of a gallop around there and a safety thing instead of this horse might have done something. Let's get back to the barn, look at everything, and go back. So I would absolutely put an X through that last race, and that's going to give you value in that race. I I, I fell uh, with that other horse that you were talking about, La Puncinella. Uh, man, that horse looks tough, but I'm just going by paper, you know, on paper. But th that other one with the with the stumble is a great great trouble line. Yeah, I think I think today, George, the the theme of today is going to be. Horses to watch out for. Iggy and I spoke beforehand. I don't know if there's anything we absolutely love, but we have some angles that might be worth using. Wouldn't you say that's correct, Iggy? Yeah. Yes. I can't wait to this next angle that I tell you here because I could only imagine the peanut gallery coming at me full steam with my next pick. So Wait. We'll okay. So you're talking about race five? Yeah. We're going to okay. race because right. I've, I've got an absolute bomb in there, but I'll let you go first. Oh, gosh, man. I don't know if I can make let, – let's hear the bomb and then let's see if okay. it'll talk me off of this. Let, let, let me okay. hear who you like in there. Here's a must-use in the pick five. We're, we're, we're talking race five, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I looked at all the – and I don't know if the also eligibles are in or not, but uh, the horse that's very interesting to me off of replays is the three – Tiger's arrow at 30 to one for Michael McCarthy. We know that Michael McCarthy 
can win first time out. He's not known for it. They, the horses improved quite a bit second time out. They went long first time on the turf. And this horse had several spots where it kind of got in trouble. Yeah. And then late, mid midway down the stretch, looked like he was really – it almost looked like Valdivia wasn't going to ask this horse. And this horse started gaining momentum. And once again, after a few – spots of trouble along the way this horse started to dart in between horses and two horses came in between and he got checked bad again the line looks horrible and who knows but i think with the blinkers on and whitey excuse me michael being so good second time out that i think you could see a giant improvement and this horse could i'm going to use it in my pick fives at a monstrous price one of our uh friends on the show obviously uh benny south street who has a uh, great, uh, great site, tripnotepros.com, uh, cites a lot of trouble for Tiger's Arrow in that race, uh, saying that not only did he lack room, as it said in the uh, in the uh, line in the PPs, but also lunged at the start, losing a couple of lins, yeah. Yeah. and that the uh, the check was a really significant check, costing him another three lins in several positions. So he, uh, he also endorsed his uh, Tiger's Arrow, and I certainly endorse – tripnopros.com as a wonderful tool to help with your handicapping. How'd you see the fifth, the Iggy? I, uh, I, that's, this is the one where I'm talking about where I'm going to hear from, from people and their handicapping. I, uh, I fall for uh, an 0 for 15 maiden in there with cool year jets. I watched the rest of the horses run. I've seen this particular horse run. He's a six year old. He runs well fresh. He runs well on grass. I throw out the last synthetic race. The races, his best three races are all th second place finishes, three times, all of them at Del Mar. It's a do or die for me today. I honestly think this horse is the horse to beat in the race. I, I got to it by looking at him, and I didn't know how to handicap it. And I thought if you had to pick one to ride, which is unfair for me because now I can see Post and who else is in there. I would have picked to ride that horse over the rest of the field. The outside wow. horse, I think, is going to get too far back. The Michael McCarthy horse, what's going to help that horse is blinkers because I know all that trouble. A lot of that trouble was caused because that horse was leaning in a lot. I, I think the, the blinkers will help. He got into that sandwich position because he was really leaning in quite a bit. And they do that sometimes, first-time starters, grass, and you know – I think the blinkers will will help that horse. I, I love that move uh, on there. If it wasn't for that, I didn't see anything special. I, I would stick. Uh, I, I'm going to give that horse Cool Your Jets one more one more chance because you're going to get a, a real price on him. You know, he's 15 and 0. Right. He's yeah. going over 15. If oh, he was 15 and 0, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, he'd be all over. <laughs> yeah. over he's not the New England Patriots, 15 and 0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I, I, mean, I, I, I like that red. horse, but watch. Those are fast heats that horse runs in on grass. I know nobody said anything, but that horse is going to win today. Watch. <laughs> I like it. I maybe. like it. I like it. Maybe right. not. I, I, I mean, there's a big chance he won't win, too, but maybe. <laughs> I see that race as a big spread race. There's a lot of yeah. evenly matched uh, runners. That, that race, uh, uh, I think, is a spread race. Six race, uh, I see a potential single. How did you guys see uh, race number six, uh, Iggy? I really uh, like a horse here. I went back and watched a couple of his re even early on races. The number three scabbard I, I like in here. I I mean, putting him up against this field, this is a true twenty here. Um, and and Dean Dean Pedersen, for those who don't know him, is a is a smaller connection trainer. Uh, that to me is he's usually a guy that will ride like Tiago Pereira, and he works with that. He goes to Pratt. Uh, on this horse. To me, it gives me such a good sign that this horse is doing well off the claim uh, for 30 that I just think he stands out. Um, this horse has had a lot of, uh, you know, breaks along its running career and he's tried everything. That's what I couldn't figure out. It was long on grass, long on dirt, uh, short on synthetic, long on synthetic. And, and his sprint races are fast races. That last race uh, at Churchill, is a legit race. He was making up ground. I, I know he's going to get a lot of play, but I believe that that's the horse to beat in. I, uh, before we get to you, Chappie, I just want to say this is definitely a single for me in the late pick five, late pick four. 
uh, everywhere, especially since number nine, Box of Chocolates, which I thought was his only competition, is scratched. So oh, I did not know that. I did not know that. So with Box of Chocolates out, now to me, like who's going to beat this horse? He comes in here for, like you said, a trainer that I highly respect in Pedersen. Uh, he's done such great work. And, uh, you know, and people might see this and go, oh, he's he's 0 for 5. He's not a – he's an excellent trainer. And I, I, I think that uh, he's bringing him here. When that horse was claimed by uh, Billy Morey, he stepped him up to 50,000, ran third. For 30,000, ran a great second. Now uh, Pedersen claimed him for 30. And if he brings him here for 20, a lot of times you think that's a negative. But he's going to get the ship and win bonus if he right. wins the race. He's going to get a nice purse. He's going to do well. So the drop in class doesn't scare me at all. In fact, that you know, in this particular case, I see it as a positive uh, with all the uh, uh, the benefits. And then to add that Pratt, who hardly ever you know gets a call for Pedersen, uh, is enticed. I you know, scabbard with box of chocolates being out to me is an absolute single. Uh, Chappie, who, uh, you like that runner or somebody else or what's going on? Uh, basically, to me, it would either be scabbard or hit the all button because I think right. that horse kind of stands out. You know, from a, from a pace standpoint, there's not a ton of speed, but I think the seven and the eight will probably go out there. Um, if you're going to spread, I, I would include the seven Rebel War who broke the rail last time. And has has some speed in a race that's not too full of speed. Um, you know, the eight sometimes sits off the pace. Went in the lead last time, but that horse was on the rail last time. So maybe the seven could shake loose early. But other than that, it's clearly the threes race, um, the horse to beat in there, Stafford. And you know, I'm a big fan of Dean Pedersen as well. I think you're right there with Rebel War because he was drawn inside. There's going to be a much comfier post, and that horse runs legit races. So 15 to 1 is crazy on Rebel War. Crazy. Yeah, yeah that yeah. won't be nowhere clear, no, close to that, I don't think. Race number seven, Doug O'Neill's uh, horse, uh, River Tibber, is scratched the one. So uh, that uh, leaves a uh, field of seven going five furlongs on the turf, a sprint. And uh, Peter Miller and Pratt, they seem to win every race they hook up together with. They are on fire. Uh, is that the horse to be good with people or is somebody else there, uh, Chappie? Yeah, I think definitely the horse to be. And Pratt just always seems to put him in the right position. Um, being down on the inside, there looks to be a ton of speed. Knowing Flavian, he'll probably somehow work out a perfect trip in the pocket, sitting right behind three horses dueling. But – just going on paper, I'm going to go with the six Harvard memories. You know, throw a line through the last race, went long in the ocean side. Two races back, two in a row. Sits right off the pace. Beat a good horse in Wi-Fi or two back uh, quite handily. And I think should get a great trip from off the pace. Seven to two is a fair morning line to me. So I'm looking at uh, Harvard memories as my top play. I think Beer Can Man also gets a good setup. And then, of course, the two is interesting because anything Pratt and Miller throw out, the way he's writing, you got to use. But I might single Harvard memories in my late pick five. Iggy? I, would, I agree completely uh, with what Chabby's saying. I thought Beer Can Man would be uh, the, the horse to beat in there. I'm going to come with one mystery horse uh, from the outside, Willie Boy, uh, with Joe Bravo aboard. This horse is going to get a clear trip from the outside, whether he gets outfooted or not. It's first time grass, and this horse has competed uh, in, in in very quick races uh, and has gone everywhere from Gulfstream, uh, Pimlico, back to Gulfstream, ran at Tampa, seven eights in uh, in a hundred grander over there. So I, this horse, it, I think, if he takes to grass, he could get a trip from the outside and. I think it's definitely a horse to use if you're spreading those five eights turf races. A lot of horses get shuffled from the inside or somebody is able to clear They're They're tough, at least for, for the way that I handicap. So the five eights grass races, uh, unless a horse is really overwhelming, uh, much the best, I tend to spread in there. So I would use all the ones that Chappie and yourself mentioned. And I'm also going to use Willie boy on the outside. Willie Boy, the only thing I don't like about Willie Boy is uh, th there seems to be so much speed lined up here. 
that it seems to set it up for somebody like uh, Harvard Memories, who's obviously going to be coming from off the pace and a lot of speed. And Willie Boy just doesn't seem to have the pedigree for the grass. I mean, his sire gets 5%. Uh, you know, the two that tried the turf were they didn't have any wins at all. The dam was OK. So I don't know. It's, he's going to have to deal with a lot of speed and first time grass. And, and so although Bravo has been riding very, very well, you got to hand it to him. But uh, I think you're, you're going to need to stalk a little bit in this race. And Harvard memories and good with people certainly seem to be the ones. Iggy, how do we close out the day in race number eight? Who's going to win? Oh, man, the eighth, I just had a couple of sneaky suspicion horses. I didn't like anybody in particular, but, I, I, you know, I noticed, like, the, the one horse that they run right back for 32 was, you know, eight to five, first time out. Pete Miller claims it, gelds it, and, and he puts Kyle Frey on that has, he's been riding and, and doing well with. So I thought that was a sneaky horse from the rail on the inside uh, uh a weird one that I didn't get to check out any of the, the private workouts, but I saw the, the Miati's got two horses in there. The four, uh, uh, Floyd Knowles, has a one sneaky work when he gets to Del Mar of 59 flat. And then the rest of them are ultra slow again. Uh, you know, he's got two horses in. Uh, I thought that he, that he uh, you know, he's got Abel Cedillo on the other one, the bigger name rider, which I think will draw more attention. But I found that to be a sneaky work, unless it's just incorrect. 59 flat at Del Mar in this field would be extremely tough. So I watched, I watched a couple of the Miati works on both of those horses. I did not see the 59 flat, but just the ones that were available. I, I did not mark down. Usually I do which date. They were okay. Both of the okay. first time. I didn't get yeah. to see the, the first time. That's why I was like. On paper, it looks a little sneaky, but you know nothing again. That, that I, I just thought it was sneaky. right. Time time wise, that that's not a Miati like work. But, right, uh, right, that's the only. Yeah. Thing yeah. I, I wasn't impressed, but then again, there's not a whole lot to beat in this race either. So you only have to be a world beater to win this race. That's it. The uh, uh, we used to have we used to have a guy uh, named uh, Chris who would do these seminars uh, in the past. And he would, it was be, it would be hilarious because he, he would go, my personal clocker uh, gave this one a B. And, you know, he was using the Harrington report. And like, but he would always say, my personal clocker. And I know he's yeah. using the Harrington report. It's so yeah. funny. But uh, my personal clocker here, uh, Mr. Harrington, uh, gave Eddie Spaghetti a B. And a lot of times you see a horse that goes favorite first time out, does nothing, uh, but then rebounds usually in, in the second start. And here you got a lot of reason for Eddie Spaghetti to rebound. He's got uh, first time gelding, first time with Peter Miller. Kyle Frey's been riding well. Uh, can, I, go, yeah. can I respond to that, though? Sure, sure. The only, the only thing that's curious here is that the fact that Pratt, Pratt's main man is Miller or, or vice versa. Right, right. And Pratt, Pratt rode Eddie Spaghetti. And now he jumps on the three for Doug O'Neill and does not choose to ride for Miller, who usually rides first call for everything. Who knows? But just yeah, that's, that's scary. Yeah. You know. Now I just put Eddie Spaghetti in the winner circle. Eddie yeah, it's a, it's a single, it's a lock. Everybody, it's a lock. <laughs> the Miatis run one, two in there. Yeah, yeah, average. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to uh let's move on to Saturday. Another uh, exciting day on Saturday, and uh, Del Mar uh, on Saturday is coming with it. They've really come with some great uh, races, some great fields. You got 10 races on Saturday. So, uh, you know, we only got like 20 minutes left. Let's delve in. How do we uh, start the first race? Uh, Iggy, first race, they're going a mile. Uh, claiming 16. These are, these are hard-knocking uh, uh, runners in here. How'd you see the first? The first race, let me pull up the Saturday form. Uh I love it. I don't know uh, Matt Shearer personally, but I love the move on the outside horse because I watched this horse win, and it wasn't a big gallop out. It was just okay, but the way uh, that he won from the outside, sometimes always, was impressive. The, the horse sat the right trip, and he went when he was asked, and he opened up on him. Uh, he gets to go an extra furlong today, but the fact that he runs him where – I believe he knows where he belongs. He doesn't him haw about running. That's why the guy 
It hits at 21%. They run horses back where they could win. I'm not saying he's worth any more than that, but I believe that that horse is going to win right back. Sometimes always Rispoli, uh, strong, strong rider, uh, and certainly has a, has a big shot here. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit towards Launchpad. I think Launchpad, uh, Maldonado has done really well uh, in these, uh, these races. This is not a runner that's going to go straight to the lead. But uh, certainly had a big excuse in his first start here at Del Mar. And I think Bob Hess is going to have him uh, set to have a, a top effort. They add the blinkers. And uh, coming from off the pace, I think the launch pad has got a shot. Chappie, any thoughts on race one? The only thing that scared me about launch pad is that hopefully those blinkers will work out of the gate because that horse never seems to break well whatsoever. Stumbled, unprepared start, shy, off slow. Uh Let's hope Maldonado can cure the gate woes, but I didn't have much of an opinion in there. When I think of unprepared, I, I think of uh, of uh, of uh, Craig Kaufman. Where's my notes? They, they were around here somewhere. <laughs> anyway, a, uh, all right, uh, race race number two, Chappie. You got a runner you think that uh, has got a big shot in race number two. Uh, tell us about it. You know, this is clearly a pace play here in here, Georgie. If you look through this field, there is – very little to zero speed whatsoever. And I look for luck of the draw, who did not show speed last time out. But I think uh, if you look, go back anywhere in the PPs, this horse uh, is usually forwardly placed. And if you go through the rest of the field, there is zero pace in this race. So I think that Umberto will sit this horse on the lead and they will crawl around the track and this horse will go wire to wire. I like luck of the draw as the lone F in race two. He sure looks like the lone F. Uh, certainly he's got numbers. On third graph numbers, they're all like, I've never seen it in a more evenly matched race. The ones that ran a seven, the two a seven, the three a seven, the four a six. The, I mean, it's just sevens and sevens and uh, all around. So from a third graph standpoint, very difficult race. Did you have an opinion here uh, at all, Iggy? No, I, I was with you looking at, I didn't get to look at sheets or, or any type of numbers, but it did even horses like the black albums got, got quick enough races uh, that would win. If I was going to pick one, I did like luck of the draw. I, 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 my top selection would have been the same horse that, that Chappie uh, picked in there. This horse, when they get hot in the claim box like that, he's a double claim right back. Uh, all of Pete, uh, Pete Ayrton's Horses seem to be running fantastic yeah. right now. So, uh, yeah. you know, at four to one uh, with Rispoli, that, that, that's a great horse to have in there. French Getaway is a horse that I've always chased. I would use that horse one more time. It, it, it's just that he gets so far back. It's tough at Del Mar. It's a short stretch on the grass. And that horse seems to, to, to come up just a, a, a length or so short. But French Getaway will be flying late. And when they go 50 for the for the half and you're I sitting know, it out, and you're going to go, man, Chappie said luck of the draw will crawl on the road. <laughs> Chappie, let's move on to our favorite bet in race number six. Race number six, we got the uh, start of the late pick five. I know I'm going to be betting it. In this race, Chappie, there's a horse that I really needed last time. Incredibly disappointing. Uh, number nine, Blue Balloon. I thought was going to do so well. Uh, but, wow, just didn't really – uh, pick it up and close like I thought he would be. He had a, he had a perfect trip, no excuse, and didn't deliver. Uh, can he turn it around, or is there somebody else to look at in race six? Yeah, I mean, to me, I'll tell you what. I, I, I watched plenty of the replays in here. Um, I think it's a spread race. Uh, I, I give a slight, slight nod to Burgoo Alley off of replays, but – you know, Ber another horse could turn the tables in here. I think that uh, the way Umberto is uh, riding, and I think finally our boy Phil D'Amato righted the ship last week, and he's starting to win some races, and they usually come in bunches. But, um, you know, I think Burgo Alley and, Car and Carpe Fortuna had to wait for six months. It was literally right behind Burgo Alley. So they almost, I don't know what they ran in the sheets, but I'm guessing it's about the same number. Uh, Burgo Alley had an eight and Carpe Fortuna nine. So, yeah, just a one number. You know, Blue one Balloon number. came out of that race, like you said, at a perfect trip. Um, if Thrilling gets in, Michael McCarthy, two sprints to a route is always interesting. And even Miss Costa Rica to me is a little bit interesting at a big price off the layoff for Richard Bolton. So, I don't have a 
Um, there could get on the bus is interesting. Uh, there, there, there's, I give a slight nod to Burguary Alley, but I think it's a spread race. Let's put it that way. Any thoughts on the sixth league? No, of course, I was closing well. That comes out of the same uh, Burgu Alley race, uh, Carpet Fortuna, same thing. Um, you know, going to need some setup. I, I thought that was an ultra tough race to handicap. I, that's, to me, one of those ones where I do go deep. Yeah, I mean, one of the ones I'm going to be using is number 10, Founders Day. I think Founders Day at uh, Oakland Park and Churchill ran very, very well. A couple of nice seconds, one for 75000 It was claimed uh, by Michael Ewing, and she's an excellent trainer. And she claimed this one for 75 Gs. So they thought highly of it. One bad race at Churchill Downs, uh, a, a really wide race last time out against Thrilling. I think Founders Day has got a chance at least to make uh, the trifecta or something like that. Let's go on to race number eight. And uh, race number eight, we, it's the uh, CTT and TOC. It's the $80,000 stakes race. A long race, a mile and three eighths in this race. And uh, let's start with you, Iggy. How did you see this? Uh, you know, this is a jockey type race. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. The, One uh, circle is always good. That was this is his big race, right? Many, this is his many, big many race of the day. What do we got circled there? Can't see it. Tap water. Okay. Tap water. Iggy. One more time, man. Yes. Let me hear you, Chappie. Let's hear it. So I, I made a dollar wager last night, and I took tap water against the field. If, as tough as this race is, wow. we're on the same page. Okay. So what we do you like so much about tap way. water? Man, the, the tap water is just – she's – one of those really tough mares to ride. It, it looks like it, whether she's on the front end or closer, uh, or, or Mike uh, got her to, you know, she broke a, a tad slow and he tried to grab her from last and she just pulls and fights. And even when she's close, I, I think today, I think with Rispoli, talk about the same thing that Chappie uh, talked about on the prior race. This is a mile and three eighths. I think this horse is probably going to be on the lead. If not, he's going to be very close. She's going to be very close to the lead. And she's just had trouble. Yeah, I know. And I think she's going to win today. What did you say? Something ride? Bad ride? Wire to wire. Ay, ay, ay. See, I don't like those words. But... Wire to wire. Oh, wire to wire. So sorry, I didn't hear that. Yes, wire to wire. I'm with you. I think today is the day. Or I'm sorry, Saturday. 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 This, but this horse got beat by Epidemia's Girl, got beat by Nage Blanche, got beat by Ride for the Cause. They're all in this race. They all beat her. They beat each other back and forth sometimes, you know? I, I, I think I think from a, two things back, if you go back and watch the last race, very hard to handle. The race before that, mile and a half, might be a little too long. Yes. And in this race, if the horse relaxes at all, there is no pace again. And I think this horse goes to the front, and, and this is my second wire-to-wire -wire play of the day. I like tap water. I'll tell you what, I, I'm a big fan of some other horses in this race, including the one and uh, – Right for the cause, Epidemia's girl. Even Red Lark likes to explode from way back. But I think today is the day for Tap Water. Iggy, you're a writer, and I, I, I want to ask your opinion because I've, I'm of the opinion, uh, and, and maybe I'm not the, you know, uh, the majority here, that these longer races, a mile and three-eighths, a mile and a half, everybody thinks that deep closures have a big edge because look how good he closed at a mile and an eighth. If he gets a mile and three eighths, he's going to blow by everybody. I found that speed does incredibly well in these marathon distances. What are your thoughts on pace wise? I think more speed horses win these marathons than closers. What do you think? I've got to ride a couple of, of decent marathon type horses and they were all close up to the pace grinding type of horses. It's just what fits that caliber. What you got to see one year with Colada Scopio, the Argentine horse that won from, you know, a mile back going a mile and three quarters. That's just one thing that that's like a sulky Sullivan type of move that, you know, doesn't really exist. You're a hundred percent right. 
from a mile and a quarter on, uh, you know, mile and three eighths on the long races that we have, the San Luis Obispo uh, at Santa Anita, the mile and three quarter races. Uh, to me, I tend to at least, if I'm not riding, and would gravitate to betting on the horses that are going to be on the front end. It's just the way that type of race is run. I agree with George the same. You, you see uh, horses come closing. Oh, that's the same thing with late closing sprinters. You know, exactly. The, you exactly. ride one of those, and every time they come back, oh, wait until he goes a mile. I'm like, that horse can't route. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah. what he wants to that, do. That, I'm sorry, but that's a great so analogy. Yeah. You, know? you hear that? You hear that every time, don't yeah. You? you? Yeah. And you and you usually yeah. invariably you get a really good price on those because let's say you know, and I've I've learned this early on. Where, where people go, wow, Mila and Nath, that other horse was closing like a demon and just missed. So that deep closer, when they get an extra, you know, a mile and three eighths, gets all the money and they they forget about the front runner. And many times, that he just doesn't have that same yeah, yeah. Keep going a mile and three eighths. Front runner now gets to go 50 instead of going 40. Right. That's, that's the difference. That's what Chad yeah. and you guys talk about the pace. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get the, uh, the winner of the, the get out race. This is uh, often the most important race of the day. If, uh, if, if I win this race, I can't, I can't give that money back. I had that my winner. Yeah, but uh, yeah. this is a, a very important race for most betters like, uh, like ourselves that, uh, you know, we, uh, we, 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 we uh, we go for the uh, go for the gusto in this race, so we need a winner here. We definitely need a winner, Iggy. You know what's funny about that? Real quick, I know we've got a few minutes. Is we talk about money management, but how about when, when you put in a pick five or whatever, you leave a couple of horses out to save money, and then you're out, you're 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 you lost the pick five. So you end up spending, you know, God knows how much in the last race on tries, supers, whatever to get out instead of just. You know, you were conserving money earlier, but when you get to the last race, <laughs> shove all in. Shove it all in. It's such a weird feeling amongst gamblers that there's racing tomorrow, but you want <laughs> the money back the same day that you lost it. You're like, no, no, no. I want that back now. Hold on a second. Let me get that back, and then we'll start again tomorrow. For some reason, I'm I'm yeah. with you hundred percent. Like if my wife don't like playing pie gal with dominoes, like I do at night, you know, in Monterey. No, I'm just kidding. But sometimes, is it when my wife asks me when she says, uh, "How is your day?" Yeah, I gotta say, I, I won or I lost. I can't say, "Well, I didn't do well, but I was very conservative in the last race and saved that money for tomorrow." No, that's never. I'm never gonna say that. <laughs> oh, anyway. God, that's right, uh, from track guys. Oh. Good. Right, hey, four, four, tenth four, race. Four. Five yeah. furlongs. I I really like a horse in this race. Let me see if uh, if you guys agree. Uh, go ahead. Iggy, uh, it's all. I, I didn't get to the. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I never got to this race yet, so I have no idea. I'm listening to you guys. Okay, this is. A I'm going to I'm going to tell you who I like, Iggy, and then you tell me yeah, if I'm going to like track. I really like number nine, Lalique. Lalique, I think, uh, is wanting to sprint. It's a, it's a, it's a sprinting closer, and I always see them running a mile as a great setup to come back to a sprint. It's got plenty of bottom, and is going to be, you know, just flying late. So uh, I think Joe Bravo taking over. He's he's doing good. Sadler's doing okay. He's got good numbers. I see this guy blowing by them all way. Uh, where am I at? Am I okay? I'm in that neighborhood. What do you What do you think in race ten? Uh, absolutely. That's uh, that's where I found the danger to be um, from a bit of a price that I had picked was the the nine horse and the ten horse. Uh, I thought were both quick enough in there, but uh, the the nine Lalic, uh, even the the route race, the last route race at Del Mar has only beaten four, and all the other four sprints are super competitive. So I'm with you there. I came up with a uh, a replay horse and it's a uh, uh, the seven horse it's a uh, martian navy's philly uh xmas surprise they went to rosario first time out horse didn't run well then put s1 floors on horse got beat a tiny bit try a different rider again tyler wins on it then i watched the last replay at santa anita and she got stopped 
she got stopped hard inside of the eighth hole and she was going to win. Uh, the hole opened up, Tyler went through and it shut down and she checked out and usually that's it. But Tyler angled her out. I mean, this is only with a 16th left and she runs on for four. That horse is worth every dollar at eight to one. It's a tough heat. I don't know how fast she is, but that horse tries real hard and at eight to one is a great bet. Love it. All right, love it. All right, there. there's our opinions for today. Hopefully you guys are going to come out with some winners. I do want to say something on a personal note. One of our handicappers that we've used many times here is a handicapper who works at Arlington Park called Nicole Newis. And Nicole Newis is a, a journalist. She does great work, excellent handicapper. But Tabby, tonight, she's going to be on TV. Where is she going to be on? She's going to be on Jeopardy. Jeopardy! Uh, Seven o'clock Pacific time on Jeopardy. The host is Joe Buck. And evidently, the guy she's going against is now, I think, the third all time winner ever. He's won like 16 shows in a row. Wow. And he's, he's just behind Ken Jennings and whoever else I don't watch the show. But tune in tonight, and she's going to be on the Morning Live Sports Show tomorrow morning. Whoa. We got her on at eight thirty, so we can discuss what happened on Jeopardy. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so definitely tune in to see her I on Jeopardy. To be on Jeopardy, <laughs> and and, to, and tune into the, the Morning Live Sports Show tomorrow, wherever you are. And it's not just on local radio. You guys are on Facebook. You guys are on the. You know, you're streaming all over the place. It's TML AM 830, TML AM 830, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and then AM 830.com or AM 830 out here on the West Coast. But yeah, 830 yeah. Pacific, she will be on. And That's give cool. me a Arlington because it's the million. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, million, Arlington. the million's been renamed now because it's now it's yeah. only 600,000. It's, it's uh, the, Something D, I think it must be for Richard Duchess Watts, a six hundred thousand dollar purse. But we're right. gonna call it the million for one last time. Yeah, let's call it the million. All right, hopefully you guys uh, had a, uh, are gonna make a million uh, with our picks. We've got some excellent uh, picks, and uh, great to, uh, to have you here on the show, Iggy. Great job, uh, Chappie. We'll see you guys next Friday, one o'clock. Hopefully we'll start right at one o'clock next time. He froze up. I think we're done. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs>